Hi, this is Wookie from Mandala Studios. Welcome to the workshop. This is part two of making an oversized mask, where we'll take you through adding the clay sculpture over the previously polycarved and deformed. Please watch the first video in the series, link in the description, if you'd like to see us making that. In future videos, we'll show you the moulding, casting, painting and finishing, so don't forget to like and subscribe to see more. Okay, so we're starting now to build up a thin layer of clay over the whole surface. A bit thicker in some places, you see we're starting to build up some little forms around the eyes, bridge of the nose, tip of the nose, but mostly it's all just about getting a few mil of clay over the entire surface without obscuring the forms of the polystyrene block we've put underneath. See, we're carefully starting to work in around the lips and the nose, a bit under the chin and the mouth. This vague form starting to occur just a little bit more than what the polystyrene indicates. Just making sure we get all the tape covered so we know we've got something we can texture. Now we're starting to work into the secondary forms, that just means we're getting a bit more shape and detail. You can see we're starting to put in some bags under the eyes, a little bit of the eyelids, just keeping referencing the material. You see we're putting the eyebrows in, a little secondary bump over the eyelids, I don't know what that is, it's something on the picture. And it's all just about making it look and feel like where we want it to go. See we're putting the lips in a touch here. If you notice you can just see down the eye there's a little bag there that'll be where we cut out to get vision just to hide that hole a little bit. Now we're just starting to rake off the surface. Do that to stop the whole thing looking what we call porridgey. So you just want to rake off the whole surface in a few directions. It takes off all the little bumps and lumps and smudgy type textures. So we actually get the texture that we want to apply. Interestingly, the back of this off looks very bumpy and smudgy and porridgey anyway. So I'll have to put that back in later. But it's just a long, slow process of just raking it out in varying uh, degrees of tooth of the rake so we get it smoother and smoother as we go through and we'll use this to start building in some extra details as well with the loops and things see working on the eyebrows there cut in with the loop tool first then build up some block behind it adding some bumps and textures to the back of the head there. Again, just raking it out mostly just to keep it smooth and even. Now we're adding a few more details to the whole piece, just looking at the nostrils, nasolobial folds, those little bags and sags around the side and back of the head. They just add a bit of clay, then rake it into the surface, trying to get it to look like what it needs to look like. Constant referencing the picture we're trying to copy. Now we start to use a plastic wire brush. I use that a lot as base cut texture. Before we go too far with texturing, we start to add the ears. We wanted their face vaguely finished before we went too far with the ears because they just get bumped in the way. These are very simple ears, just a case of blob of clay, scoop out some material from the inside to try and create those structures. But they're very simple cartoony things in the reference material so we're not too worried about it being tricky but then yeah back to the wire brush which gives us a nice basic texture to start working on the texture with 
I like to talc my clay before I texture it. This is all done in uh, water-based clay, sort of a buff school clay. Uh, you often talc oil-based clays as well, but I like to do it just stops the build of any little piling bits as we drag the rakes through it. Uh, we're just going over it with a stipple sponge there just to add a bit more break up to the wire brush texture to give us the base of the skin. Then we start to add lines and wrinkles with a wrinkle tool. Just drag it along following the contours and going across the contour to create sort of X shapes where the creases of the skin will mash up to create texture features in the surface. Again, brush it out with talc to soften those features off. You can do a similar thing by raking through various things as a plastic, but for this we don't need to. That would give you more control, but this is a big rough sculpt that doesn't need that level of control for what we're doing. Now we're adding some pore texture using a little thimble. Again, it's a constant layer of add a detail, soften it out, add a detail, soften it out. Back in with the sponge, brush that out. And you see we're starting to get closer, adding a few more little details with a little loop tool now, just really adding those fine wrinkles and control lines around the eyes and lips. Just working on the lips there with a little wire rake. Let's get those all going up and down like cracked lips do. Soften that out again. And a few more little wrinkles around the eyes. Just playing at this point, just make it look how I think I want it to look. There we go. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed.